Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. You can see we've got a couple of people tuned in already. Hey Lauren, hey Sarah. So welcome to the stream. My name's Liam. I'm one of the developers here at Archipelago where we create Lightroom presets and creative profiles for photographers. And in this stream, very, very excited to showcase a new set that's coming soon to our Quest subscription series. And that's Quest 17 Air. These presets are modern, clean, they're cool toned presets with emphasis on greens and blues and really, really beautiful skin tones as well. So we're gonna see those presets in action during this stream. We're also gonna be taking a look at a bonus set of presets that will be included in the July's release of Quest. And that is some incredible depth of field Photoshop actions. So very, very excited to showcase those as well in the second half of the stream. I can see Sarah's already saying that she's very excited about that set. You've been testing them out for us. So thank you for that. So a big welcome. Do jump in the chat and let me know that you're here. I can see we've got Lena. I know Lena was waiting for a little while before the stream. Thank you for your patience. We are live now. We'll get underway shortly. Oksana's here as well. You've been on a stream before, I'm sure. Do let me know if this is the first time you've been on one of our live streams. It's always nice to know who's new around here. For anyone that doesn't know, Quest is our monthly subscription service where you can, as a member, download a set of presets every month for free. And that's just $8 each month for the membership. And you also get access to all the archive pre-release sets as well. So the ones that we've released in the past, you can purchase those from the archive store. And you also get 30% off our regular Archipelago presets all year round, so you don't need to wait for a sale as well. So lots to love about that. And it's just $8 each month for the membership. So definitely go to archipelagoquest.com and check that out if you want to learn more but not right now because we're gonna be doing the stream you want to see these presets first um, but we always like to do these streams to showcase the sets before they become uh, live so this will be coming out on the 1st of July so a few days time so we always like to do these just to showcase the set uh, in advance but we also like to give away a pre-release copy of the presets so to one lucky person tuning in in the uh, on the live uh, if you interact in the chat as we go through the stream we'll be choosing someone to win the pre-release copy of both Quest 17 Air and all also the depth of field Photoshop actions as well. You'll also get a month's free Quest membership if you're not already a member. But if you are a member, don't worry. Instead of a month free, we're gonna send you some uh, Quest swag so you can still be in with a chance of winning. So let's have a look. Sarah says, they're amazing. Can't wait to watch you demo them and learn more about them. Yes, we'll be diving into those shortly. Corey's here. Yes, welcome Corey. Thanks for joining. So we've got some incredible photos that we're going to be editing with in this stream. And these come from two lovely photographers. So we have images from Lucy and we have images from Marisa as well. You'll see the photographer's name up in the top left as we go through the stream. So you'll know whose image it is. Um, so thank you to both those photographers for submitting the images, letting me use them for the live stream. Uh, you'll also see the EXIF data up there as well. So if you want to know what uh, focal length it is, you know, settings for capture, all that kind of thing, you can see that up at the top left as we go through the stream. So we'll kind of run through these images um, in order and I'll answer any questions you might have got, showcase the presets. We'll also be taking a look at the uh, the Photoshop actions, the depth of field actions uh, in the second half of the stream as well. And then at the end of the stream, we'll announce someone uh, to win the pre-release copy of these presets as well. So definitely stick around through the stream if you can. We'll also have this up to watch uh, after as well. So if you if you can't stick around for the whole stream and you want to catch back up on this and any of our other streams, you can do so on our YouTube channel. And just to shout out as well, we've been putting quite a lot of content out through YouTube recently. So as well as these live streams that we do at least once every month, we also have tutorials on there, Lightroom tutorials. We have uh, shooting techniques, gear reviews. There's all sorts of stuff on there. We release something at least once every week as well. So make sure to subscribe if you aren't already. Uh, drop a like on this video if you enjoy this, uh, this live stream as well. Just helps us out to grow the channel and reach more photographers. Oh, Quill's on again. Thank you, Quill, for joining. Afternoon. It's actually evening here. We've got the sun setting. Don't know if you can see that just over there. There's a bit of light coming through. It's actually been really overcast all day. So uh, I'm glad there's a bit of sunshine popping out for the end of the day. Lena says, such brilliant photos in the gallery. Beautiful. Yes, they are absolutely incredible. 
All right, so let's start off with this first image and I'll just showcase the air presets to begin with. So with this image and with any image, we're gonna start by just adjusting the exposure and the white balance first, but everything's looking pretty spot on. I'd probably just increase the exposure just a tiny little bit. And because there's some uh, nice warm sunset light coming through from behind them there, I'm just gonna increase the warmth just a little bit as well, just to kind of emphasize that nice sunset vibe. I think I might just straighten this a tiny little bit as well. Not too much. Yeah, maybe somewhere around there looks good to me. All right, so let me show you the presets. So like I said, this is Quest 17, the 17th installment of our Quest presets. And we have three presets in here and we have a series of tools as well. So AQ 17.1, uh, and that's a one click with that preset. So I'll just show you those before and there's after. Absolutely stunning. Like I said, you've got those nice cool tones. It's very, very sort of clean. There's no grain applied as default with these presets. Um, really, really beautiful colors. And then the other two presets in this uh, in this set are co sort of variations on that. So if you take a look at AQ17.2, you can see it's got a little bit more contrast. The highlights are a bit brighter, the darks are a little bit darker. So just a little bit more pop. Um, and then AQ17.3, we have the opposite, so it kind of softens down those highlights and lifts up the shadows. So nice uh, variations there. It just means that you can go through, you know, a whole collection of images with slightly different lighting. So in this case, we've got light coming from behind. You might want to boost the contrast a little bit if we've got light on the subject or it's sort of uh, midday where it's quite harsh. You might want to use something like AQ17.3 to soften the image up, but you're going to get consistency um, with colors as you edit with this set. So really, really handy to have those variations. So let's have a look for this, I think. Ooh, I don't know, it's between one and two. I think maybe maybe two, just because it's adding a little bit more pop. Like I said, it's a back, backlit image, so they tend to benefit from something with a little bit more contrast. So I'll go for AQ17.2. And you can see that's applied the air profile, and that's set to zero as default. And if we go ahead and increase the profile, you can see that that just shifts the tone tones of the image. You can see it just adds a little bit more contrast. You can see how the, the highlights adapt. And again, just a little bit more punch. So this image would benefit from that. Again, with that back backlight coming in through between the couple here, I think adding a bit of a punch with the air profile is just bringing out a little bit more definition in the subject. So I'm gonna go around about there. So set that to about 96. And then let me show you the other uh, tools that you have as part of this set. So like I said, there is no grain applied to this um, when you first apply the preset. So it's nice and clean and crisp and smooth. Uh, some people really, really love grain. Some people don't like having grain on, but you have got the flexibility to just add the grain with the grain plus tool. So you can see that there, that's without and that's with. And one of the really nice things, and I've highlighted this actually in a tutorial, tutorial video that I put out um, last week, is the new amount slider that's part of the latest update to Lightroom. So up at the top left here, when you apply a preset, you can actually go up here and you can decrease or increase that particular preset. So I kind of go into this in depth in the tutorial, so definitely check that out if you're interested in learning more. But on this, you may choose to sort of decrease the grain and go for something in between the two. So I'm gonna leave it without grain for now. Other tools we got, we have lens correction. So if lens correction isn't applied automatically by your camera, so in this case it is. So if you hover over here, you can see it's not actually doing anything, but if you have quite heavy vignetting or distortion on the image, um, this just allows you to turn on lens corrections. Um, so quite handy, again, just for that sort of crisp, really clean look, we're just reducing the amount of vignette and kind of uh, flattening out and straightening the image and getting rid of the distortion can just help to push that really clean, crisp look. And then two tools that I really, really love in this set. We have Temp Minus and Temp Plus, and these just add a little bit more either cooling to the temperature with the Temp Minus, or a little bit more of an increase to the temperature with Temp Plus. So again, nice to have that variety. This is without, this is with Temp Plus, and this is with Temp Minus. So you can kind of just push it one way or the other nice and easily without having to go over and tweak the white balance. Um, so again, if you want that sort of consistency, if you like a cooler image, you can just go through and use the temp minus on all of your images and you're gonna get a nice consistent look throughout. Uh, for this, I would actually go temp pl plus because we've got that nice golden light. So it just pushes that warmth into the image that I think looks super nice. So let me show you before and after. 
So there's the before. Here's after, and that's with AQ172 Air. We've increased the profile to around about 96, and we've used Temp Plus to add a little bit more warmth to the image as well. Super nice, here's the side-by-side. -side. I'll go ahead and zoom in and show you a nice close-up. Really gorgeous. Let's have a look at what you're all saying. Latrinia's uh, said, greetings from Florida. Hello, thank you for joining. Stacy's on, thank you for joining as well. Quill says, oof, creamy and crisp. That's a really good description for this set, I think. Creamy and crisp. Love the dreamy effect. Such a sucker for grain, says Lena. Yeah, I do like grain myself. Um, so like I said, it's really nice because now we have this flexibility with the uh, with this new slider up at the top. So if we apply grain and we want to either increase or decrease it, you can do it super easily now. So again, for this, if we want to add the grain, I'd probably go for, back it off a little bit, somewhere around there. So I just brought it down to about 51. So it's just a nice subtle texture there on the image. Very, very nice. The new update on Lightroom, it's perfect for presets. Yes, it is, it's incredible. It's uh, one of the most exciting updates to come to Lightroom of recent years, I would say. The mask tools were one. I think the masks are incredible uh, using the new panel that's up here. But I also think that this new preset amount slider is incredibly exciting. Very, very cool tool. Troy, Liam, your vibe always makes me anticipating getting my monthly presets. One day I'll get the courage to send you an image to edit. Oh yeah, Troy, 100%. Definitely, definitely get us uh, an image sent over. We'd love to uh, have one of yours on here. But yeah, thank you so much again for, for tuning in and for the kind compliment. All right, so let's move on to the second image. So this one is from Marisa. Love this photo. We have this kind of, uh, it looks like Joshua tree somewhere around that sort of area. Um, I'm gonna increase the exposure just to make sure we have the subjects nicely exposed, but actually I think the white balance is looking good to me. I probably wouldn't change anything, but let's have, let's have a look at the presets and we'll see. So AQ17-1, again, look at that. The skin tones are super nice here. Really nice and uh, and crisp and creamy as, uh, as Quill said earlier. So that's AQ17-1, AQ17-2, and AQ17-3. So I think one works well on this. It's sort of um, side lit, I think, by the look of it. Uh, so this this is kind of a middle ground AQ17-1, so I think that works well. But let's have a look at the air profile. Yeah, I think adding a little bit more of this just to kind of make sure that the black point is nice and rich, uh, just so it's not too faded looking. That looks really nice to me. Um, again, if we need to, we can use lens corrections. Uh, I'm not gonna use it on this. I quite like the vignette that we're getting naturally on here. It definitely suits this image. Um, but if you wanted to, you could add that. And then we've got temp minus and temp plus. And I think I quite like it with it just neutral like this. It's kind of a nice balance between the two. So there's before and there's after, and that's with AQ17 too. Again, let's zoom in and have a quick look at some of the uh, the details here. There's before and after. The whites look super nice, very crisp. And again, the blacks as well. Skin tones looking really, really lovely. There's before, there's after. And if I show you this side by side, really gorgeous. Quill says, I reckon this set will be perfect for newborn images. Bring on July. Yeah, this, I think it would work really, really well for newborn. Again, nice skin tones, nice crispness. We have those kind of cool tones, which are lovely. All right, so rolling through them. Image number three. This is another one from Lucy. This really nice sort of rooftop scene, this lovely setup with the rug here. We've got the candles all around as well. And this sort of cityscape in the background. So I'm just gonna start by just straightening it up a tiny little bit. Somewhere around there looks good to me. All right, so I'm just gonna play around with the temperatures, a slight increase on that. And let's take a look, so AQ17-1. So this is a good example of those cool tones. So you can see 
in sort of the shadowy areas, what it does to the to the blues, it just adds that nice injection of cool toning in the shadows and shifts those blues across as well to be sort of more across to the teal side rather than towards the purple side. AQ17-2 and AQ17-3. I think for this, three is looking nice. So a little bit softer, not quite as um, heavy on the contrast. Just gonna bring the exposure back down a tiny little bit. And let's take a look at the profile. Yeah, maybe a, a little bit of an increase, nothing too major. So I'll set that to 25. So there's your lens correction if you want to use it. So some images, when you apply the lens correction, it's really gonna transform the image uh, massively. Uh, and for some Im images, especially I tend to find on indoor, the lens correction can just really clean things up and make it look really sort of like, um, just really tidy and clean. So, and obviously you get rid of the distortion, so you kind of straighten up lines as well. So it can be really, really handy, but I think I like it as it is um, for this. And again, temp minus and temp plus. I would be tempted to go for 10 plus, but I'm just gonna bring the amount down a little bit here. Let's have a look so you can see how much you can play with this. Yeah, maybe somewhere around about there looks good to me. So that's before and that's after, and that was with AQ17-3. And there's the side by side. So you can see again what it's doing with the sort of reds in the rug. You can see what it's doing with the highlights, just got a nice sort of creaminess to them. Uh, the blues just shifting over a little bit and we just have that nice sort of cool toning in the shadows. Troy says, I'm blown away by the creamy feel of this set. Definitely gonna use some of the borders from Riven mixed with this, yeah. I love mixing and matching always good fun and the borders in Riven are incredible so I agree with that Troy definitely good shout so let's zoom in a little bit on here there's your before and after side by side looking very very nice all right so image number four this one's another one from Marisa we've got this uh, really stunning shot here uh, I love a classic car, nice green car here. And we've got this uh, subject sat in the car. Love the color tone in with the outfit in the car here as well. And then obviously this gorgeous golden light coming in. Very, very nice image. So let's take a look. So we've got obviously backlight here. So we might have to play around with the contrast levels a little bit. So I'm just gonna increase the exposure. I'm just kind of seeing how much light is on the, uh, the subject's face there. Uh, I think, Temperature wise, I'm probably quite happy with that. I might wanna boost the warmth again because we've got this uh, rich warmth in the background, um, but I'll have a look at the presets first and we'll, we'll check it out. So AQ17-1, AQ17-2, AQ17-3. So I think, yeah, I'm liking the pop in the highlights with AQ17-2. Again, it works really well for these backlit images and it just seems to inject a little bit more warmth into it as well. If you take a look at one versus two, versus three. So I'm gonna go two on this one. And let's have a look at the profile, yeah. So increasing this again is just gonna help make sure that the black point is uh, nice and rich. Bring the exposure down a little bit, somewhere around there. Now for this image, I'd definitely be adding grain. And I quite like the heaviness of the, the default grain plus. Um, looking really nice there, nice amount of texture. Uh, lens correction. Again, I probably wouldn't use it on this. Um, I'll show you a little tip though. If you are gonna use lens corrections and you find that it's removing too much of the vignette, if you jump into lens corrections down here and go to the manual tab, at the top you've got distortion, which I'd recommend leaving because that's obviously gonna straighten up the lines. But down at the bottom you have vignette amount. And if you drag that back to the left, that's gonna take it back to the amount of vignette that was naturally there from the lens. So if you wanna sort of clean things up but you don't wanna brighten the corners up too much, you can bring this back. So I'd probably bring this all the way back to uh, minus 100. So it's not affecting the vignette in this from this lens at all. It's just uh, straightening up the image. Um, so the distortion's straightened up there. So this is the before and after. So only a slight tweak there. So let's have a little look. I'm probably gonna use temp plus. So we get that nice warmth. I'm just gonna have another play with the profile. Yeah, I'm gonna crank it up quite high. Again, because it's backlit, and uh, we're just losing a little bit of the contrast. So increasing this will really help to bring that back. Make sure there's nice structure in the image. There we go. So there's the 
side by side comparison. Looking really, really nice. E92 BMW says, love that warm image. Nice, creamy warmth. Really enjoy the slider aspect for the preset, says Corey. Yes, 100%. Have you watched the video that I made yet? Um, it kind of covers off uh, some ways that you can use it a little bit more creatively. Rather than just using it for the presets, you can kind of mix and match some of the tools from different sets and you can use the amount slider to really dial them in. Definitely advise watching that if you get a chance. I love sessions with cars. That edit looks great. Thanks, Corey. The one-click tools have made such a difference for me when it when it comes to editing, says Lena. Yeah, definitely. So handy to have them. All right, so. Image number five. So we've got another rooftop looking scene here. I think it's a rooftop. Yeah, it's gotta be. Um, with this amazing cityscape in the background. So again, I'm just gonna start by straightening the image up a tiny little bit. Somewhere around there. And I think this could do with a little bit more warmth. That's looking good. Let's take a look. AQ17-1 really suits this image. It's very sort of um, a very light image anyway. So having that fresh, cool tone look suits it really well, I think. AQ17-2, I like that. The Christmas is really nice. And three, actually three is looking really good on here. I like the softness um, between the shadows and the highlights. But actually, I'm going to increase the profile just to make sure that we've got a nice balance between the two. And that's looking really, really nice. So that's set to 114. Just going to bring the exposure back down a tiny little bit. So that's looking really good already. So that was AQ173 and increase the profile. And yep, yeah, this is definitely one that benefits from the lens correction. So you can see here how it just sorts out that little bit of distortion that we got from the lens and just lifts up the vignette in the corner so I definitely want lens creation plus on and then temp minus or temp plus I'll probably leave it as, an, as neutral I think for this yeah probably go for neutral there maybe just a tiny boost in the in the regular white balance and that looks really good so here's before and here's after and that's with AQ17 3 and increase the air profile to around 114 as well Again, those nice blue tones. And I love what it's doing to this sort of red in the brick in the building behind them. Really, really nice. Quill says, this has given me the itch to go out and shoot. We have a stunning sunset here in Norfolk. Need to make most of it. Oh, Quill, I'm jealous that you're in Norfolk. Such a gorgeous part of the country. Yeah, I've definitely got a nice sunset that I'm missing out on over here. It's literally been overcast all day long. And I wouldn't say chilly, it's been sort of like 18 degrees Celsius, uh, which is kind of quite warm for here, but it's been very humid, but the wind has been there. So it's not been particularly nice, but it looks very nice out there now. So Lauren's just shared the link for the uh, for the preset uh, amount slider tutorial. So definitely uh, save that to watch after this if you uh, if you have the time. It's quite insightful. All right, okay, so we're on to the last image here. This is just to highlight these uh, Quest 17 Air presets. But once I've done this image, we're gonna go ahead and edit a few of these with the depth of field Photoshop actions as well. So you can see those um, so let's go ahead and do this last image and then we'll move on to the actions shortly. So another image from Marisa. This is absolutely stunning. I love this. Uh, we have the, these two subjects here sat in the water and I don't know if this is um, vape or if it's just because it's cold and it's his breath, but uh, it looks very cool either way. It's going to bring the exposure up quite a bit. And I think this needs straightening a little bit as well. Maybe somewhere around there. And a little bit more warmth. Yeah, that's good to me. So let's take a look. AQ17-1. Oh, super nice. That's a really nice transformation. AQ17-2 and AQ17-3. So I think for this, it's between one and two, probably. 
I'm drawn to two just because I like the extra little bit of warmth and that sort of pop in the highlights, but let me know what you think. That's one, and that's two. So it's between those two for me. I think two, but let me know what you think. Cool says, just moved here from Cornwall. Oh, you are jammy. I love Cornwall as well. Very jealous. I mean, I can't complain. I live on the edge of the Peak District, which is also a very nice uh, place in England, so uh, can't complain too much, but... E92 BMW says, go with two. Lena says, love two. All right, let's do it. AQ17 two. One click. There's before, there's after. Now, uh, let's have a play with the profile. Probably won't increase this. No, I'm not gonna increase it at all. I quite like, there's, there's quite a lot of contrast there anyway because of the, the lighting scenario here. We've got quite deep shadows on the right hand side and down here, so I'm not gonna increase the contrast. Um, uh, sorry, the profile all on this. I'm gonna leave it set to zero. Uh, and I would definitely add grain to this because it's gonna suit this image really well, so grain plus. Uh, lens correction is not needed because this is already set by the looks of it with this camera. And then we've got temp minus and temp plus. Um, and if I was going to use either, I think for this I'd use temp minus. I really like what it's doing to the uh, to the tones in the foliage and the trees and things behind. So I'd maybe go for that and maybe just boost the temperature a tiny little bit in the white balance. And that looks lovely to me, really nice and moody. So you can kind of see how you can swing this um, this set both ways. We can have something really fresh, really clean looking, uh, or we can actually have something a little bit more moody. Um, so very versatile. So here's the before, here's after, and there's the side by side. Absolutely gorgeous. Love that transformation. Got the grain on there. Love those green tones in the background. Yeah. Stunning. All right, so we'll move on in a moment to the depth of field Photoshop actions. So very, very excited to show these to you. Uh, this is a bonus set that's gonna be part of uh, July's Quest release. So you'll not only get the uh, Quest 17 Air presets, you'll also be able to download um, the depth of field Photoshop actions as well as part of your membership. And like I said before, it's just $8 each month. Um, so it's an incredible, incredible bargain anyway, um, but you're gonna get an extra bonus set this month if you are a member. So definitely, definitely check that out. If you're not already subscribed to our membership, you'll wanna go and do that. Uh, and these, like I said, come out on the 1st of July. So not long to wait, but we will be giving these away as a pre-release uh, at the end of the stream. So you may be lucky and get hold of these early. All right, so let's dive back into this first image here that we edited. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do before you use these uh, depth of field um, actions is because what they're gonna do is they're gonna blur the background of your image. They use Photoshop's advanced AI to find where the subject is in an image and allow you to blur the background out whilst keeping the subject nice and crisp. Um, but what you want to do is if you have grain on your image, you want to turn that off before you go into Photoshop because otherwise it's going to look really wacky. What it'll do is the grain will be applied on anywhere where the subject is that's unaffected by the uh, the bokeh, the blur, and then obviously the background is going to blur out. So you're going to have this strange effect where the grain's only applied in parts of the image. So you want to turn the grain off apply the depth of field effect in Photoshop, and then you'll want to come back into Lightroom, and if you want the grain on there, apply the grain after. So again, nice to have this tool here, because if you're gonna use Air to edit these, um, the default presets don't have grain switched on, but then you can do the depth of field, come back into uh, Lightroom and apply grain plus if you want grain on your image. All right, so I'm gonna come down to effects, I'm gonna turn the grain amount down to zero, so we have that nice clean starting point. And um, because I'm on a Mac, I can just press Command E to take me into uh, Photoshop. So if I press Command E, there we go. So that's going to open up Photoshop. So now that we've got the image here, we're going to find the actions. In my case, it's up at the panel at the top right here, but it might be in a slightly different location. You might see sort of a little play button. Um, on the right hand side here, um, but I've got mine uh, popped out into the uh, 
into the menu on the side. To load these actions, we've got a separate video to show you how to load these in, but you just need to press the little menu at the top and then load actions, find the action, and then that will load into this panel just here. So as you can see, we've got the image that we've just uh, brought across from Lightroom. And we've got the action up at the top, which is QA01, depth of field. So this is quest actions 01, depth of field. So we're gonna go ahead and press play down here. That's gonna run the action. And this is gonna take a few seconds, uh, maybe a little bit longer, depends on your system to do this. It's quite complex what it's doing. It's using, like I said, Photoshop's AI to figure out where the subject is in the scene and it's gonna blur the background out um, behind them. So there we go, that's now ran. So if I go down here to the layers, you can see we've now got a depth of field uh, folder here with the various different layers. So if I turn this off by pressing the little I, we can see that's the original image. And this is with the effect applied. So a really amazing transformation already, but there's a couple of things that we can do with this just to kind of uh, tweak it further. So you'll also notice as well as the actual depth of field action, we have a few other tools up here. So we have customize, and this is gonna take us into the uh, blur gallery. And this is where we'll find the blur that's been applied to the image. So as we can see, that's a tilt shift blur. So if we go into here, we have the tilt shift. And the reason for that is so that we have a plane of focus. So it looks a little bit more natural. Um, we'll obviously have a plane of focus and then it'll blur from that plane of focus um, to the rest of the image. So that's gonna look much more natural. If we just had it select the subject and then blur the rest of the background, it wouldn't look natural at all. It would look really um, strange with all of the black background blurred and the subjects just crisp and sharp. So this means that we have a plane of focus and we can move that by just clicking and dragging up and down. So you can see this is set in the area where the plane of focus will sit and then it will blur from that point upwards. We can also change the, uh, the amount of blend between the blurred area and the unblurred area. So for this image, what I'll probably do is I'll probably rotate this a little bit. Um, just because we've got the, uh, it looks like they're on a bridge and it runs sort of this way. So I'm gonna rotate the angle of the, of the tilt uh, just to match the lines on the bridge. So the blur now goes in this direction. Let's have a play around with the, the amount of blend. So I'm gonna go maybe about there and let's just bring it up a little bit more. So you can see it's keeping this part of the bridge um, in focus and it's gonna blur from that point backwards. And we can change the amount of blur using this amount slider up at the top right. So we can increase or decrease that. So you can have a really intense blur effect or something more subtle. So for this, I'm probably gonna go, let's say, around about there. So quite an intense blur. I've got that set to 41 pixels. And once you're happy, you can just press OK up at the top here and that'll take you back to the regular um, Photoshop view. We can go back in there at any point just by running the customize action again. And then we've got a couple of other tools. So we have edge minus and edge plus. Obviously this is using um, Photoshop's subject recognition to figure out where the subject is in your scene. So with certain images, it's gonna work better than with others. So just have a play around and, and see what works for you, but you, you'll sort of grow to learn which images are gonna work well versus which ones might not work so well. But if you find that the mask around the subject is um, spread too far, you can use the edge minus to bring that in close to the subject or edge plus to kind of move it further out from the subject. We then have reset. So if you want to remove the effect entirely, you can uh, run the reset action and that will just remove it. And then once we've finished with this, we're gonna merge the layers so that we can save this back to Lightroom. But before we do that, one of the things we want to do is just check how it's um, masked the subject. So it typically does quite a good job. I'm gonna zoom in here, but you can see that it's, it's sort of cut into the face a little bit here and some of the hair um, it's not done so well with. And down here where we've got sort of more complex edges like these fingernails, it's sort of blurred those as well. So we're gonna to wanna to tidy those up a bit. And we do that using the mask on the depth of field layer. So make sure you have the mask selected uh, not anything else, so make sure this is highlighted. And then what you want to do is go to your brush. And because this is a white mask, we want to use the black brush uh, to affect it. So you'll find that over here. So if you see these two boxes, these may be different colors. They may not just be black and white. They may be different colors on yours. If you find that's the case, if you click the smaller boxes just above it, that'll set these to black and white. 
and then you can switch that by either clicking the little arrows here to switch black to the top or you can press X on your keyboard and that'll switch them as well. So now that I've got black selected, I can change my brush size. So if I bring this down nice and small. Uh, so with the fingernail here, I can just brush over that and you can see how it removes the blur. So I'm just gonna go around these edges. Uh, hair is definitely one area to watch out for. With this image, there's not a lot going on behind the subject here, so I don't have to be particularly uh, accurate um, because we've just got blank sky there anyway. So I'm just gonna make sure that we've got nice defined hairs around the subject's head. Same thing with the eyebrows, anything like eyelashes and stuff. So again, uh, the subject on the right here, we're just losing a little bit of the features on the face. I just wanna make sure that that's not affected. I've been a little rough here. You can be as, um, as precise as you want to, depending on the image that you've got. But just to give you an idea of how this works. Cool, that's looking good to me. So if I zoom out just a little bit, and I'll just show you, this is before. And this is after, so it's adding that really nice, rich depth of field. We've got that really beautiful bokeh, that blurring of the background there, uh, and the subjects just pop out. So really great if you want to remove some distraction in the background or to create that effect of shooting with a really shallow depth of field. So either if you don't have a lens that can shoot that wide open, uh, or if you just didn't when you um, took the photo, but you want to add that look after, really, really handy to do that. So again, before and after, and if I zoom out and show you the full image before and after. So absolutely incredible. It looks super nice. Uh, so I'm happy with this. So the last thing I wanna do is select the merge action and press play. And you can see that's just gonna flatten it down to one layer. And then from there, I can uh, close this window, save the image, and that will then take me back to Lightroom. And there we go. This is the image with the depth of field applied. And it'll just stack those together. So you can see here we've got the original image and we have a new image that has the depth of field effect and that's a TIFF. So it just saves it as a TIFF back into Photoshop. Depending on the settings that you've got set, you might have it set differently, but I have it set to TIFF. So we can see that's without the effect and that's with the effect. So really, really transforms that image, looks super nice. Quill says this is a game changer for those group shots where you've had to reduce the depth of field yeah, definitely, yeah. So if you need to use um, sort of a different uh, aperture to make sure that you're getting everyone's face in focus, but then you want that sort of soft uh, depth of field effect, this is one, one uh, situation where this tool will be really handy. E92 BMW says, wow, looks amazing with the action effect. Thank you very much. All right, so let's move on to the next image. I'm just gonna shrink those down. So image number two. So again, this was the before, this was after. Let's move this over into Photoshop. So I'm gonna press Command and E. Uh, I'm just gonna double check I'm not getting any grain on. That's right, no grain, so Command and E. And now we're in Photoshop. Let's just get that full screen. So again, QA01 depth of field, run the action. Gonna take a few seconds for it to figure out where the subject is. Troy says, so the action is included with our July presets. Yes, so there will be two separate sets that you'll have the ability to download in July. You'll be able to get Air presets for Lightroom and you'll also be able to download uh, Quest Actions 01 Depth of Field. Uh, so there'll be two separate downloads, but they're both included for free as part of your subscription. So if you are a paying subscriber for $8 a month, you'll be able to download both of those sets uh, from the 1st of July. So nice little bonus for you, little gift. Very, very exciting. You all rock at Quest, thanks Troy. Thank you very much. All right, so the effect is applied. Here's before, here's after. So it's not as immediately obvious on this because we have quite a shallow depth of field anyway, but this is one situation where you might want to go for something a little bit more intense. Um, so again, let's jump into 
the blur gallery gallery by uh, running the customize action and then in here we can go ahead and increase or decrease that blur amount so i'm going to go for something a little bit more intense so I'm going to set that to around about 50 pixels uh, and actually because um, we only have sort of the uh, the chest up on our subjects we don't have any uh, feet or sort of full people in the in the image uh, I can actually bring this down further so that more of the background is blurred if it was up here you can see it sort of keeps more in focus but I don't need that because uh, actually naturally if I shot this on a really uh, low aperture um, really wide aperture, sorry, you would uh, get most of the background blurred. So I'm going to bring this down to the bottom here and I'm happy with how that looks. So let's go ahead and press OK on there. So again, there's before and there's after. So just a little bit more of a, a punch of that depth of field. Um, I'm going to select the mask and let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. You can see a couple of little areas um, just where it's struggling with the edge of the subjects here. So I'm just going to tidy that up a little bit. Again, you can be as precise or or not as you want, depending on the image that you've got. I'm not going to go too crazy. Just obvious areas like this where it struggled a little bit just because the light hit in those. Uh, and over here. And yeah, shoulder. And then I'm going to increase the size of the brush and let's just do it like this. Again, another image here where we've not really got a lot going on behind the subject's hair. So I can kind of, I don't have to be super precise on this part because it's a nice blank sky. But that's looking good to me. So if I go back to there, here's before and here's after. So again, just a really nice push in that, that bokeh just softens it up. We've got creamy tones in the preset and now we've got even more creaminess with the uh, the depth of field effect there as well so really really nice and it's done a really good job of just detecting where the subjects are in this like i said before you'll kind of figure out which images this works well on if you've naturally got um, a little bit of depth of field there or a very uh, sort of an obvious separation between the background and the subjects it's going to work much much better if you have objects i think you'll see on the next image or one of the images um that are sort of in a similar plane of focus as the subjects and sort of very close to them it will struggle a little bit with that but it does a very, very good job. This is something relatively new to Photoshop, so the ability for it to detect subjects in an image using AI. Um, so it's a very complex thing that it's doing, but it does a really good job in most cases. So again, I'm gonna merge this by pressing, uh, choose a merge and running the action, and that's gonna flatten the image down, and then I can press Command and W and save. And we move back into Lightroom here. And I'll just take a second for it to save that, and there we go. So. That's before and that's after. So we've got that edited version with the depth of field. So really, really nice. Super easy to use. Before we, we had this ability to, um, to have the automatic detection of subjects and obviously a simple action that's doing a lot of the work as well. Um, it would actually be quite a complex thing to do because you'd have to go in and separate things out into separate layers, apply blur, make sure that it's, um, it's kind of not introducing any haloing and things around the subject. So it's amazing that we can do this as quickly as we are. Um, so fantastic tools. I think you're really going to enjoy these. So this next image here, uh, that we edited this one's by Lucy. So this one's a little bit more complex We have a little bit more going on especially because behind the subjects We have these flowers and something else just here and looks like a bottle of champagne. So um, You'll probably find that Photoshop will struggle a little bit to figure out where the subjects are in this um, So let's go ahead and bring it over into Photoshop Lena says, super excited to try these actions for the shots with my 35mm to achieve that super creamy bokeh. Yeah, definitely. You know, shooting with something like a 35mm, even if it's a wide aperture like f1.4 or f1.2, you still don't get that creamy uh, bokeh depth of field because, you know, a wider lens like that just can't create the same as something like an 85mm or, you know, um, 100, 150mm. So having this ability to sort of creatively add it in post is definitely very welcome. All right, so depth of field, let's run the action. And it's gonna take a couple of seconds. Time for me to hydrate. All right, there we go. So 
Definitely want to customize this because as you can see, it's sort of picked those flowers out. Um, I mean, it, it kind of looks like she's wearing a flower crown. So it's probably gone, ah, oh, yeah, must be wearing a flower crown. We'll just go with that. Um, so it's, it's not particularly natural looking. So let's go ahead and customize this. Let's run the customize action, takes into the blur gallery. Uh, so again, I'm gonna start off by just adjusting the, the tilt shift and where it sits. Um, and actually for this, I don't want the blur to be um, too far down the image because uh, I want it to look really natural. So I'm gonna bring this right up to where they are because this is the plane of focus. If, it was, if I had an, um, a lens where I had a really wide aperture, I would be focused on those subjects. Um, so it would be here and I get a little bit of blur here and much more blur in the background. So that's a much more natural position for it. Uh, and again, if we just set the amount of, uh, in terms of the transition from the uh, in focus area to the blurred area. So I would say somewhere around there looks quite natural. And what I'm looking at as I'm ignoring this bit for now, but just looking at the rooftop here and these candles and just sort of seeing how it falls off from the in focus area to the out of focus area and somewhere around there it looks quite natural to me. So it's kind of fallen off in quite a natural way. I'm just gonna set the blur amount. So I think for this, I'm not gonna go too crazy. I'm just gonna reduce the blur amount a little bit because I want it to be quite a subtle look. So yeah, probably around there, set it to 14 pixels. Again, you can go back in here and tweak this later, but I'm just gonna choose okay for now. So this is without and with. So like I said, quite subtle, but I think it's doing a good job if I turn it off for a minute. You can see we've got these um, cables down here and just the buildings in the background um, are a little bit busy looking. So kind of distracting. Whereas if we have it on, you can see it just smooths that out nicely. All right, so let's select the mask and we'll deal with this situation here where we've got the, uh, the um, flowers being affected. So let's go ahead and select the brush. And what I'm gonna do, obviously these would still be a little bit in focus. So instead of um, attempting to blur these, cause that would look really natural cause they are actually right behind them. Um, I'm more bothered about this little area here and the bottle of champagne. I actually want those to be more in focus. So I'm gonna erase that using the mask so that we can see that comes back into focus. Let's make sure this area is the same. And then here where the bottle is. So now instead of this being very obviously separated between the flowers and then whatever this element here is, um, we now sort of see a much more natural look where these objects that are sort of just behind the subject are still in focus. You know, we're removing the, the depth of field effect on those because they would be in focus naturally. So I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and turn it off and on. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and run the customize again and we're gonna play around with the amount. somewhere around where I had it, maybe like 11 pixels. So something really quite subtle. So like I said, it's not too not too crazy. There's before, there's after. Uh, and you will find on some images, if you go too crazy and, and blur it too much, it's just gonna look really unnatural. So I'd always err on the side of uh, going for something a little bit more subtle. Uh, and I've just realized, if I get back onto my mask here, I just missed that little bit of the leaves there. Go. Just gonna bring it down the hairline and just any other areas that might look a little strange. Uh, and actually what we could do here is I'm gonna go for a nice big brush. So the plane of focus is somewhere around here. I'm just gonna go for a nice big brush and I'm just gonna go across this area. There we go, so now the effect really is just applied to the background, so that's before and that's after. So really subtle, but definitely just draws the eye a little bit more to the subjects there, softens out the business in the background, got a bit more of a creamy bokeh than we would have had with the natural um, aperture of the lens. So go ahead and merge these, and then I can press Command and W and save. And there we go, so this is before and this is after and you can see the effect is really pronounced at the top of the frame but much less so at the bottom of the frame there so again quite natural looking 
um, just a nice subtle amount. Unique tool to get that clean bokeh. Yes, definitely. Maria's just joined. Joined just in time. Love this photo. Yes, a stunning photo. All right, so we're going to do this image over here with the depth of field as well. And then once we've done that, we'll announce the winner of the pre-release copies of both Air, Quest 17 Air presets and these depth of field Photoshop actions. So I applied grain to this image, so I'm just gonna go back in here and turn the grain off. And then let's press Command and E. Jump into Photoshop. So again, I'm gonna run the action. Give that a couple of seconds to figure out where the subject is. There we go. So there's before and there's after. So quite a, a nice amount of, um, of blur in the default effect. So let's start by customizing the blur a little bit. Again, going to the tilt shift, I can change the positioning. So I want it to be around about here so that the subject is nice and sharp and some of the elements around them, just like the door handle down there, are sharp as well. But we've got a little bit of blur coming in the bottom and then quite a lot in the top there. I think the transition amount is good around about there. And I'm gonna leave I don't know, let's go for let's go for something quite pronounced, I think, on this. So I'm gonna set it to about 31. Corey says that image is my favorite. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? Super nice. Alright, so this is without the effect and this is with. And let's go ahead and play around with the mask. So I've got the black brush selected. I'm on the depth of field mask over here. So now I can just make sure that. The blur is not on any areas that we don't want it. So I'm just going to brush around the subject here. There's not much on the subject anyway because of the way that we've uh, adjusted the tilt. But one thing that I probably want to do is actually remove the the blur from the top of the car here. Um, there is actually a little bit of natural depth of field from the lens, but I don't want this really heavy bokeh that we've introduced to be really anywhere other than sort of the sky and maybe sort of this area at the back of the car. So what I'm gonna do is increase my brush size and I'm gonna remove it from this area of the image. And that's just gonna give us a nice crisp line around the edge of the car. Obviously it starts to soften up at the back anyway, just with the natural um, depth of field from the lens, but I'm just gonna remove some of that heavy blur from there. I'm going to keep it down at the bottom. Here's a little bit being introduced down there because I think that looks quite natural. And then if there's any sort of coming in from the back, I'm going to leave that as well because that looks good. So here's without and here's with. So you can see it's really just affecting this top portion of the image mainly. And again, it just adds that nice extra bit of uh, softening and just blurring up the, uh, the back of the image there. So I would probably leave it like that. Again, nothing too over the top just adds that extra little bit of pop. Um, of course, if you wanted it to kind of uh, affect the car and go for something really dramatic as if you were shooting with a super wide aperture, you know, something like 0 0.95 or something, um, you can do that, whatever works for you. Uh, and like I said before, you can also change the angle of the tilt as well, but I like that um, as it is. So that's without and that's with. So again, I'm gonna merge the layers and then save that back. That's gonna pop that back into Lightroom for us and it'll stack it with the other photo. And of course we had grain on this image before, um, so you're gonna wanna go back in and adjust the grain amount. So if we're on here, we want to add grain plus, and that's gonna give us that nice grainy look again. So make sure you switch that off before you apply the depth of field, uh, and then apply it after it comes back into Lightroom because now you can see that the grain is applied even on this blurred area here, and consistently throughout the image. 
So there we have it. That was a nice overview of both Quest 17 Air presets and the depth of field Photoshop actions. Both of these are dropping uh, as part of our Quest subscription series on the 1st of July. Very, very excited for you to get your hands on these. Uh, we're gonna be announcing a winner shortly for a pre-release copy of these presets. And if you are a, an individual that's not already subscribed, we'll give you a month's free Quest membership as well. But if you are already subscribed, we'll get you some uh, Archipelago Quest swag instead. So we'll announce that in just a moment. Just a little bit of news, like I said before, um, we have been putting lots of videos out on our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so definitely go and check those out if you haven't had a chance. We've got some amazing tutorials on there. We've got some shooting techniques. Uh, of course, the live streams, you can go and watch those back. Um, and yeah, we, we'd love your support on there. If you can like and comment on those videos, just helps us to get our videos out to more photographers and grow our community. Uh, and we also have a sale on right now. So if you're watching this stream live or shortly after it's aired, we have our summer sale on. You can get 30% off all our Archipelago presets using the code SUMMER22. Uh, so definitely check that out while it's on. And there we go, Lauren's announced the winner. So the winner of the pre-release sets is Corey. Congratulations, Corey, very, very exciting. I know you've been on a couple of streams before, so very exciting that you can get your hands on these pre-release. Uh, so if you just drop us an email, we'll make sure you get those over to you soon so big congratulations to Corey but thank you so much to everyone else for joining uh, as always like I said give us a like on this video uh, if you're watching the um, the sort of uh, pre-recorded stream uh, give us a comment as well let us know what you thought to the stream what you think to these presets if you have any questions about them drop those in the comments we'll try and get those answered for you as well but yeah big thank you to everyone for joining and uh, yeah huge congratulations to Corey and for everyone else July 1st um, get your hands on these presets. Um, so definitely, if you're not already subscribed, go and check out our Archipelago Quest membership. It's an incredible bargain, $8 a month. You're gonna get these presets and get access to the uh, previously released sets to purchase from the archive store. Um, so definitely go and check that out. That's it from me. I'll see you in the next one.